Hi friends and welcome back. Thank you so much for joining and if you're new here, welcome. My name is Morgan and my fiance Sam and I live on a small ranch in Wyoming where we're super passionate about living off of the land and being as self-sufficient as possible. As you can tell, today we are in the barn and I wanted to walk you through kind of what our chicken operation looks like and how we manage all of our chickens. We have about 30 chickens and two ducks. Our chicken kind of journey actually started about two and a half years ago in a small neighborhood in Colorado. I actually had a ridiculous fear of birds and so I convinced myself that if I had chickens, I would be able to get over this fear of birds because I would have to be like their mother. So I emailed our HOA and asked them if I could have chickens. They said, as long as the city is good with it, we're good with it. So I emailed the city and they said, sure, no problem, as long as you don't have any roosters. So we built them a small little coop on the back side of our house and went and picked up some chicks. We soon found out that one of those chicks ended up being a rooster. And so we had to relocate him to a new home and bring in another hen. And we still have those two hens, but when we moved to our ranch here in Wyoming, we actually joined our two hens with about 20 other chickens. So we now have a lot of animals, <laughs> but I tell you this story to encourage you. If you want chickens, definitely don't let, you know, a neighborhood or not enough land hold you back. It can definitely be done. And if you want me to share any of kind of my tips or tricks and what I learned about raising chickens in a neighborhood, definitely let me know. But without further ado, let me take you over and show you what our coop and setup looks like. So as you can see, I am able to actually access our chickens from inside our barn. This is really nice because we have our goat set up on this side and our chicken set up on this side, all of which is inside the barn. I'm sure most of you know in Wyoming we can get some crazy weathers, especially wind or snow and blizzards, and that can make it tough to come out here and really tend to the animals. So this is great because it allows me to do everything from inside. Obviously I can access them outside when needed, but it's really nice, especially in these cold times, to be able to access everything inside. So the door you can see there, that is actually an external door in the barn that leads to the garden. And then this door behind me, this is one that actually leads into where the chicken's kind of whole setup is. So we'll dive into that in just a second, but I wanted to show you some things that we have out here that are super nice. So you can see this hatch behind me. This is actually where all of our chickens lay their eggs. So they access this from inside. And it's really nice because I can just come in here and grab the eggs. They all lay in here. And so if I can't get in here until maybe the nighttime, I can just quickly grab the eggs without disrupting them while they're sleeping to make sure that I get the eggs before they freeze at the end of the night. Um, and it's really nice because if I had to go inside, then you kind of have to disturb and disrupt all of the chickens when they're trying to sleep. And I just don't like to do that so much. You'll also see behind me, we have egg cartons, that type of thing. I definitely would not recommend doing that if you're going to have internal access into the barn. Those were there when we got the property and frankly, they just get really dirty and really gross. And so that was kind of a lesson learned that I wanted to share with you is I would store your eggs in either like a dry room or in your house or somewhere where it's a little bit more controlled and less dusty, just to make sure you're not ruining. I mean, that's a ton of egg cartons. If you have chickens, you know, those are sometimes really hard to come by. And so that's just one tip to make sure you're not ruining your cartons is keep them in a more controlled area versus right here. So with that, I'm gonna show you what the nesting boxes look like and then we can dive into their actual little house. So for your reference, this is those nesting boxes. So it's really nice because I can just simply come over here and lift them up. And as you can see, we can just completely access the eggs without having to go into the barn at all. It's also nice because I can actually see where they roost. The angle won't show you right now, but I can also just check on the chickens and get kind of a full view of the coop uh, without having to go in there. So when I have to come in at night, that's super nice. Then we can just slide over here and this is the door to take us into the coop. most important area when it comes to the chickens. This is where they sleep. This is where they spend their days in really bad weather. So it was important for us to make sure 
one, that it was big enough for enough for that many chickens, and two, that we can keep it kind of the wind circulating, air circulating, and can keep it dry in here. So during the winter months, to keep it clean, we just kind of scoop out all of this bedding every now and again, and just make sure that their nesting boxes, the bedding, all of that is staying really clean. And then in the summer, we'll do one kind of good go around where we actually scrub the walls. In the winter, it really doesn't make sense because it doesn't ever really get above freezing. And so I don't wanna come in here, wash it all, and then leave a wet and humid house for the chickens. That's a good way to freeze your chickens out. And so make sure that their bedding and the straw that's down on the ground, their food and water are all staying super clean and we haven't had any issues with that. So talking about food and water, this is kind of the setup we have for them. As you can see here, we have this bucket and it has some metal like nipples for them to be able to drink out of. And then back here, you can see this cord running through the wall. This is where we are able to actually plug in their water heater. And so we just have this little black cord that goes in their water and keeps everything warm enough for them for the winter. So this totally keeps their water from freezing. We've never had an issue with it and it seemed to work out really nicely. Then for food, because we have so many chickens, we needed to make sure we had enough food. So it started out with these small PVC pipe little tubes and we quickly realized that's not enough. We had to refill those like every single day and it just wasn't sufficient. So we came in and created some bigger tubes. So you can see here, the chickens are able to access the food down here and we actually fill the food up here. So then gravity just pushes the food out when they pull out food it then um, just refills down here in the bottom. We keep cracked corn in one, and we keep just kind of their pellets, their laying feed in the other. And that has seemed to work out really, really well. We have no issues. The ducks are able to access it. Everyone's able to access it. One thing we did learn is to keep them raised up a little bit. So there's a bit of room between the bottom of this and the ground. Uh, the only reason for that is because if you have them totally sitting on the ground, it makes it so that they're able to kick in a lot more dirt and are able to keep it just not very nice. And so you find that their food has to be replaced a lot more often. So I would highly recommend just lessons learned to raise these up a little bit. Obviously make sure your little tiny chicks can still access it, but that has seemed to work a lot better for us. Then if you look behind me, here is where we actually have our um, like roosting area for the chickens. So this is just two tiered 10 foot beams where they're able to sleep at night. Something that's really important if you live in a cold climate is for your beams to be at least four inches long or wide. That way your chicken is able to set their foot flat on it when they're sleeping and they don't have their toes kind of curled around something. That way when they sleep, their body heat is on top of all of their toes and they don't have toes kind of hanging down. That's a really good way to get your chickens to be cold or get frostbite and so it's important that they're able to lay their feet totally flat. So with these, they're able to do so. And we haven't had any issues with frostbite or anything like that. And we don't put heaters out here traditionally unless it gets really cold. Then our ducks just tend to sleep on the ground. They don't roost. They just sleep down here. We also have a tire in the corner that I have found. Um, some of the chickens just enjoy sleeping in the tire together. They kind of cuddle up and sleep in there, which it's totally fine by me, but that way we just have a little bit of options and kind of variation for them in order to sleep in. Next, I'm going to show you what the roosting boxes look like on the inside and how we are able to keep the chickens out from sleeping in the roosting boxes. So as you can see, this is that tire that I was talking about. I have a few chickens that like to just kind of hang out in this tire and all sleep together. Um, they were four chicks that we raised together, and so I think they just always liked sleeping together to stay warm. So this is kind of there just for them in order to do that. They do that every single night, and it's super cute. I love it. And then behind me, you can see this kind of um, great thing. That is where we have our window, and so that window remains open all the time, and that's how we're able to get fresh air in here. I also have a vent up in the ceiling, two vents actually, that you're not able to see, but that is kind of how we can get a cross breeze going. And so the great part about that is it doesn't actually hit the chickens directly when they're sleeping, so we can keep them kind of dry, out of the wind, and a little bit warmer when they're all huddled together in those really cold days. 
So that seemed to work really, really well for us. And then you can see here, this is where we actually have our nesting boxes. And so we have this little shelf type thing for them so they can jump from the ground up onto here because the openings for the nesting boxes aren't that big. That has worked really well. Um, just gives them a little bit easier entering and exiting. Another issue that we ran into was the chickens were actually sleeping in the nesting boxes and I know this is super common and so we were trying to solve how to keep them out of the nesting boxes. They get them really gross and they don't want to lay their eggs in there so then you've got eggs all over your property and so whenever we find that there's been a lot of poop or buildup within the nesting boxes we know that they're sleeping inside the boxes so when that happens we actually just have this uh, metal that just kind of attaches down here on two screws um, and it's just drilled in up here so we're able to connect this down and then I'll, I would connect that outside as well and then the chickens can't sleep in here um, you only have to do it for like two or three nights and they kind of take the hint and stop doing it for a while so we've found that that works really well as well so that's kind of our fix that we have there it's super simple super cheap but has been super effective for us and I would highly recommend doing something like this if you're having that same situation. So now I'm going to take you around the outside and kind of show you what that looks like, show you what the chicken run looks like and also how we have the door automatically closing and shutting, or sorry, closing and opening every single morning and night. So let's jump out there. So we are now on the outside and I apologize, it's super windy here in Wyoming, um, so it might be kind of hard to hear me, but we're now on the outside. This window right here is that window that I was showing you inside the actual coop. And then here is where their door is. This door is a chicken guard and it is absolutely amazing. It is something that you're able to pre-program and we actually got it off of Amazon. So you are... So you are able to program this up here to open the door and close the door at any time that you want. So you can change it whenever. All it takes is four AA batteries. Um, and we change those about once a season and haven't had any issues with running out of battery or anything like that. And so all it does is just opens the door and shuts the door at a certain time. So if you're out to dinner and you can't get into the chickens to close them at night, you don't have to worry about a raccoon or a coyote getting into them. And same goes with getting it up in the morning. So we have found this to be probably the most important thing that we have in our coop. So I would highly recommend this. The kit comes with the opener, the string, the door, and then these two track panels. And it's probably took maybe 10 minutes to install. So highly recommend that as well. We are back in the barn and away from the wind, but you can just see as to why it was important for us to have the entire operation inside. It's not fun when you have to work outside and the food's blowing away and all of that. So we have really found this to be a great setup for us. I hope you found today's video helpful. And if you have any suggestions or questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments. I love learning from other people and love seeing what types of things others are doing so I can kind of get a better system or setup for myself as well. So thank you again for joining and I will see you in the next one. Bye.